located in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, Giant Mine produced gold until 1999. Nearby, Con Mine produced gold until 2003. The processing or roasting of ore, which contained the gold, produced dust containing high levels of arsenic. It is estimated that more than 20,000 tons of arsenic was released into the atmosphere and deposited onto the land around Yellowknife, Dilo, and Deda while the mines were in operation. Members of the public and Indigenous governments and organizations expressed concern about what this arsenic might be doing to their health, so a human health risk assessment, the HHRA, was completed. This study was carried out in partnership between the Government of the Northwest Territories, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, and the NWT Regional Office of Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs Canada. The purpose of the HHRA was to measure potential exposure and assess the health risks for people living on inland lakes in the area, as well as people using the areas around Yellowknife, Dilo, and Deda for traditional and recreational activities. Arsenic and antimony were identified as the key contaminants to measure in this study. This study built upon the information we learned from the Giant Mine Human Health and Ecological Risk Assessment, which looked at the food people ate, living in Dilo, Deda, and Yellowknife, and what they do regularly. The HHRA examined how people use areas outside of their communities for recreational and traditional activities. Different locations and ways people use the land were discussed with members of the community. An online survey was also used. Based on this information, some key areas were identified. Area A, the western study area within the 10 kilometer to 25 kilometer radius of the giant mine site. The North Slave Métis Alliance reported fishing in many of the small unnamed lakes within this area particularly west of Yellowknife along Highway 3. Area B, the northwestern study area within a 10 kilometer radius of the giant mine site, where Martin, V, and Ryan lakes are the most commonly visited lakes. Area C, the western study area within a 10 kilometer radius of the giant mine site, surrounding the city of Yellowknife and close to Con Mine. The only lake identified where fishing occurs was Long Lake. Area D, the area directly west and closest to the giant mine site along the Ingram Trail. People told us there was low use of this area and it was limited mainly to hiking and running. Based on discussions with the Yellowknife's Dene First Nation, a traditional land use area was identified within a 25 kilometer radius to the southeast of the giant mine site. People said that they fish and harvest around Duck and Mason Lakes and harvest around Hay Lake. Representatives of the Yellowknife's Dene First Nation shared their concerns about needing to also test fish eyes, organs, and the fatty layer under the skin in addition to fish flesh. Fish samples were collected from Mason and Duck Lake. Muskrat samples were also collected from Duck and Hay Lake and other harvesting areas within the Yellowknife Bay area. Short-term exposures from recreational activities such as hunting, harvesting, running, hiking, and swimming were studied. Exposure from eating fish and periodically drinking water from inland lakes in the area was also considered. Long-term year-round exposure to residents living on or using inland lakes including V, Landing, Ryan, Walsh, Banting, Prosperous, Madeline, Pontoon, Prelude, and River Lake were studied. Arsenic has been identified as a key concern from a health perspective. Arsenic is considered to cause cancer. Therefore, this assessment looked at the risk of developing cancer from arsenic concentrations that were above background in soil, indoor dust, water, sediment, and country foods in the area. Background concentrations represent expected arsenic concentrations in the environment. For example, those areas without the influence of mining or other industrial activities. Antimony exposures do not pose a health risk. The results determine that the risks of developing cancer were very low to low and similar to the risks from medical procedures such as yearly x-rays at the dentist or having one CT scan. 
the two recent risk assessments told us that there is very low risk to people who live in Yellowknife, Dilo, and Detta, who enjoy all types of recreational activities within the study area and beyond. This includes fishing, hunting, harvesting, berry picking, swimming, boating, hiking, and camping. There is very low risk to people living on the inland lakes, for example, V, Landing, Ryan, Walsh, Banting, Prosperous, Madeline, Pontoon, Prelude, and River, and who also eat country foods from these areas. Mushrooms can continue to be collected outside of the 10 kilometer radius from Con and Giant Mine, with the exception of mushrooms from the Tricholoma taceae family, which should only be eaten if collected from greater than 25 kilometers from the legacy mining areas. Risks are low for indigenous peoples who have traditional lifestyle that includes hunting, fishing, and gathering within the study area and the Great Slave Lake area. Locally harvested traditional foods are a healthy and often preferred alternative to supermarket foods. The following activities represent a very low risk. Eating fish from inland lakes and Great Slave Lake in the study area, including their eyes, skin, fatty layer, and organs. Eating berries from around the Yellowknife, Dilo, and Detta area, but in areas away from the immediate vicinity of the mines. Eating small mammals, land birds such as grouse or ptarmigan, and waterfowl from around the study area. Arctic grayling from Baker Creek were collected in 2020 to address concerns from the Yellowknife's Dene First Nation. The results of extra sampling show that people eating fish that have been in Baker Creek do not represent a health concern. People can safely eat Arctic grayling caught in the Yellowknife area and within Great Slave Lake. A separate HHRA study was completed to look at risks for outdoor workers along the Ingram Trail, Highway 4, between Yellowknife and the Yellowknife River. The results tell us that workers were at low risk from arsenic exposure. However, it is important that workers still follow safe work practices, including wearing personal protection and using safety equipment. Guidance from the Office of the Chief Public Health Officer advises the public against drinking untreated surface water from any lake or river because of bacteria and viruses that can make you sick, such as E. coli from animal feces and Giardia, which can cause beaver fever. The city drinking water in Yellowknife, Dilo, and Detta is safe and is always tested before it is provided to residents. Concentrations of arsenic in the air in and around Yellowknife, Dilo, and Detta were very low and were not harmful to your health. The concentrations of arsenic in dust in the air is regularly checked by the Giant Mine project team. There is a dust suppression plan in place in case anything changes. As previously shared through the GWT Public Health Advisory, some lakes clustered around the Giant and Con mine sites have higher levels of arsenic. So swimming, wading, fishing, berry and plant picking are not recommended, but you can still enjoy paddling, hiking in and around the area. These areas are shown on the map as the yellow. We refer residents to the GNWT Public Health Advisory for more specific information. The outcome of this work helped us to better understand the risks of using these areas and will inform public health advice from the GWT Chief Public Health Office. A brochure describing the guidance has been prepared for public distribution and the GWT website will be updated as required to ensure it includes up-to-date information.